What's happening everybody? This is Geyuka Musa, also known as Coach G, and I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of The Friday Fix. Now, for today's episode, we're going to talk about communication. And specifically, we're going to talk about the communication secret that can take your relationship to a whole different level. Now, communication is something that's talked about a lot in relationships, whether it's in books or blogs, you know, on the web, wherever. But the thing about what you typically hear is that people often talk about and write about ways to better express yourself, you know, ways to more accurately communicate what it is you're feeling, what it is you're thinking, what, what you're needing. And as great as those skills are and as necessary as that is, it really just scratches the surface on where the real, where the real gold lies in communication. And from my experience, the real gold lies in how you receive things, not so much in how you express them. So you'll hear people talk about being present and listening, and, and I think those are great and necessary skills also. But when I talk about reception, I'm not really talking about that. What I'm talking about is how you hear what you hear, not just what it is you're hearing you know, how you process that information, how that information lands on your soul after it hits your eardrums. And so let me give you an example. Picture this, you're walking down the street, you're, you're walking down the sidewalk and a person is walking towards you. And it's a, it's a stranger, you never met them, never seen them before. And right as they pass you, they say, you're stupid. Now, in that moment, you're probably thinking a few different things. You might be thinking like, say what? Huh? Are, are you talking to me? Or you might be thinking, you know, what's their problem? Or like, huh? What? <laughs> that was weird. But as strange as a situation like that might be, it probably registers pretty low on your, your aw damn meter. You know, it's probably barely makes a mark on that meter. But let's imagine the situation unfolded the same way, except this time it was in an office building and the person walking past you was a coworker that you've worked with for two or three years. And just as they passed you, they said, you're stupid. Now, in that situation, the odd damn meter is probably going to tick up a couple notches, you know, but let's say it was your mother who said it, or, or maybe even your spouse, or, or worse yet, you. Now we're talking about that odd damn meter going into the red and maybe even blowing right through the roof. And the bottom line is that in each of these different situations, the same information was being communicated, but the difference was who was communicating it and who was communicated directly affected how we received it. So here's our, what? Oh, man. Now, you know what that sound means. That sound means that this is a WTF moment, a what's the fear moment. And so here we have an opportunity to really get to the fear that sits beneath all of what we've been talking about. So the real question is, what is it about those different moments that caused us to respond differently to hearing the same information from those different people? And the answer to that question is that the fear is that what's being said might be true. Now, this fear starts to go up in the same way that the odd damn meter goes up when the person that's saying this thing that, you know, has us responding differently, when the person saying it knows us better than the, the previous person. That's why the fear is, is heightened. So for this week's fix, what I want to do is I want to help you adjust your reception to, to fine tune it a little bit. And we can think about our reception or how we receive things in the same way that, uh, in the same way that we think about how a radio receives things. You know, when you, when you turn the dial slightly, it can receive something completely different. So we're going to move from FM to AM, from the fear mongering to the awesome me. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to ask a question. And this question, I want you to ask it specifically when that odd damn meter is starting to move towards the red and almost blowing through the roof. And the question is, is simply this. Is it true? 
Now, when we answer that question, if we find that it's not true, we have an opportunity to make a decision in that very moment to stop giving this moment, stop giving this interaction the importance and the attention that we would give something that was true. You know, stop treating it with the, the priority and the prominence of something that is actually true. Now, if on the other hand, what's being said has some truth in it or might be completely true, the decision we have an opportunity to make in that moment is to, you know, think about, think about that interaction as kind of like a gift, you know, kind of a, a nice reminder that what's being said is you know something that we might also already believe to be true about ourselves and that it's something that we probably already want to work on so we can think about that moment as just a reminder that here's something we we you know we already know that we want to work on and we can decide whether we want to express this internally or, or externally we, we can decide to thank our partner or our mother or whoever it is that's uh, or, or ourselves you know whoever it is that's bringing that back to the forefront of our mind. So the reason that all of this is important, you, you remember earlier in the video, I said that uh, the, the communication goal is in the reception and not so much the expression. And here's why this is important and why that statement is so true. How we receive things directly affects the quality and the authenticity of how we express things. So for example, if our partner is coming to us with, with judgment or shame or blame, that's going to directly affect, you know, the, the authenticity of what we're expressing that might bring about that judgment, shame, and blame, you know, to the point where we'll start to censor ourselves so we can avoid feeling those kinds of things, avoid that response from our partner because we don't like that flavor anymore. And the truth is that we have the opportunity to decide that what's being expressed to us does not necessarily have to equal how we receive it. Even though our partner may be coming at us in a judging, shaming, blaming, rejecting type of way, we still have the choice to, re you know, to receive it differently. We still have the choice to decide how that's going to come inside of us. Bottom line is it's your choice. So thank you so much for watching this episode. Until next time, this is Coach G reminding you to free your mind so your life will follow. Take care of each other, all right?